Good morning, y'all. What I'm about to do is I'm about to get my Sunday dinner ready. And so I have my chicken in the sink. It has been soaking in vinegar water for a little while to clean it. And so I haven't cleaned the fat or anything off of them yet. So that's what I'm about to do now. I'm about to trim them up and clean them out. I have some chicken legs and I have some um, chicken thighs. So I'm about to get that cleaned up and then we can get that put on in the oven. We just gonna go and get this chicken clean. And you see chicken thighs, they have all that fat right there on the side. They have the little tail here. And then in here, they have like some kind of, I don't know what that is. So what I do is to clean the chicken, I have me a, a um, tray over here to throw all the fat and stuff in. So I just cut that excess fat off on the ends. And then you take this and you just cut that off. Just cut that off. You can even pull it off, y'all, like that. And then up in here, you just take your finger and slide it and pop that little nasty gut stuff out of there and throw that away. And just clean off any excess fat that you see. Just get it all off. If you pull back the skin, there'd be some right here up under the skin, along the sides. On top of the skin, you might have some feathers. So you want to get that off of there. But yeah, just clean it up the best you could. But that's how you do the chicken thighs. And I just take my knife and I run it across the top of the skin to get those little feathers off just like that okay all right and just keep on doing the same thing Now the chicken legs, you do pretty much the same thing. Just pull off any fat. You could take this little yellow piece off right here. It's hard to get it off of that though. Just take that little yellow piece off. Just like that. Pull any feathers that you may see. And that's it for the chicken legs. See, that's it for that. All right, so I got all the chicken clean. I'll be back when it's time to season it. I had to come back and show y'all. Um, while I clean my my sink and stuff, I'm gonna take my chicken and put it down in some salt water so it can be getting its last little clean before I season it and let it sit you know in this solution and then I'm gonna I'm gonna wash it off real good and then I'm gonna put it in my pan and we can get it seasoned but I just wanted to show you this last little step because I wasn't finished just because I was throwing it in a bowl I was throwing it in a bowl because that's what I had cleaned so it's down in this salt water and so it's just going to be soaking while I clean up my sink and stuff and get to give it the last little wash. All right. So I'll be back. Before we get started, I just wanted to show y'all. Look at my romaine lettuce growing. Y'all remember I said I cut the tops off. And look at how it's just growing. So good, so good. Yes. And then I just cut my onions back again. I cut all of those off the tops of the onions. I'm going to show you. See how I cut them all down short? They're not like they was at first. All full and stuff. And then this the other ones that I'm starting. Well, I'm not starting, but that's what, how I cut them down. 
So I'm trying to learn the right way of cutting them down. So I cut them down like that to the bowl. It's because I don't want the tips of them to be brown like that. So I cut them all the way down to see if I could prevent from the tips um, turning brown. All right, y'all. So now I got all the chicken washed. So now I'm just about to get it all seasoned up and everything. So what I have is some Creole seasoning, poultry seasoning, a little cayenne pepper. I'm gonna use just a little cayenne pepper, just a little salt. It say onion, but it's salt. I put my salt in here. Black pepper, garlic powder, onion powder, and paprika. Okay. So, I'm get my gloves on. opened up. Y'all want to be real careful when dealing with chicken so you don't spread no kind of germs, bacteria, nothing like that. Okay. So I have my chicken and I'm just about to just put them in this pan. So we're going to start layering with our seasonings. Just put it on here. Season it to your preference. Like I tell y'all, my taste ain't your taste. That's how it is. Just put it on here. See, that's the poultry seasoning. And plus, I'm using a lot of chicken too, so I can't tell y'all how much to put on there because it's going to be different. You might be cooking lesser. Adding a little salt. Garlic. Onion powder. <laughs> Bless me, Jesus. Okay, I got another garlic powder because I ran, I mean onion powder because I ran out of that one. So my onion powder, black pepper, and then paprika leaves. And paprika. Okay. So now we're just gonna get this a good mix. Rub everything in. And to this pan, you're not gonna have to add any water because the chicken is gonna make its own broth. So do not add any water to this. You're not gonna need it. Rub that chicken. You want to make sure that you massage it in real good, get it all down this chicken because, you know, make sure all the meat is seasoned. Make sure you get up under that skin good. Don't just get on top of the skin, get up under that skin. See, get up under there. Rub your hands up under there. Just like you do your chicken breast, how you got to get up under that skin. Get up under that skin on this chicken. And I'm not gonna add no more seasoning because it looked pretty good to me. I'd rather it be under seasoned than over seasoned. You see how it ain't no seasoning right there? You gotta get up under there and rub that chicken. 
Okay, so now I'm just about to lay them out in the pan. Nice and neatly, get the skin straight on them. Now, I'm about to take them onions that I cut up and froze. If you haven't seen that video, go and check that uh, food prep video out. And it's for my onions and my bell peppers. So I'm just gonna take some of these onions and just sprinkle it all over. Okay, and then same thing with the bell pepper. And then I'm gonna cover this with some foil and put it in my oven that has been preheating on 375 degrees, but I have my navy beans in there. I mean, not my navy beans, my northern beans already in there. I had cooked the northern beans and froze them. And so, let's get some of this and put it over. See how good that look, y'all? And if you have some red bell pepper, yellow bell pepper, green bell pepper, you can add all of them if you want them. But this is what I have. So, I'm going to cover this with some fall and get it in the oven. And I'll let y'all know how long it cooks when I come back because I don't know how long it cooks it. You don't have to poke no holes for no steam or nothing because we want this to bake. It's going to release its own liquid. That's the best chicken broth you can have. So if you're not going to put a gravy on your chicken and you're going to barbecue it or something like that and your meat is done, pull that um, broth off of it and put it and freeze it because that's some good broth. Some natural broth. So I'm going to take this and put it in here on my bottom rack because I ain't trying to be cooking all day y'all. I got a late start today, so I'm going to show you these beans, ouch, show you these beans. So, y'all know four don't really get that hot. These is little four things, but let me get this out your way so you can see. Okay, so this is my northern beans, and I cooked them. I threw my paper away, so I can't even tell you when I cooked them. But I cooked them um February, I know, sometime. And so I got these beans, and I just stuck them in the oven, and the only thing they have to do is heat up. All I got to do, and they smell so good, y'all. They really do. Look at them. I got me some... Y'all look at them beans. They season so good. I got me some smoked turkey tails in there and some onions and bell pepper and they just season so good. So I'm just gonna get these a little stir and get them back in the oven to finish heating. But yeah, so I'll come back when I'm um, ready when I'm ready to move on to the next step. All right, y'all. Hello, my beautiful, wonderful peeps from all around the world. How y'all doing? Today is Sunday and I am in here finna cook my Sunday dinner. Well, I will be what I will be preparing today is smother baked chicken, great northern beans that I took out of my deep my deep freezer that I had already cooked. I thawed them out um last night. So what I'm doing what I what I did was took them and put them in the oven. Um and also I'm gonna make some rice and some cornbread. Now I'm not for sure yet if I want to make some fried cornbread or some or some baked cornbread because I want the cornbread to last, you know, 
uh, at least two days. And you know, when you make fried cornbread, sometimes it's really not that good the next day. So I don't know if I want to make baked cornbread or fried, fried cornbread, but we will be satisfied with fried cornbread. So what I might just do is make a small batch of fried cornbread instead of making too much. I say small, but it ends up not being too small. So it's, um, it's not going to be the whole cake this time. It's going to be my fried cornbread, how I make it in the little balls. And you'll see how I do that when I do make it. So I will make that for y'all so y'all can see how I make that cornbread. But right now, I'm about to get my rice on the stove. I have my uh, chicken in the oven already. I have my um, rice in the oven already. I'm just making my intro a little later than I did my chicken because I had to, you know, get that chicken season on up because I had a late start today with getting my Sunday dinner cooked. So I just got that on in the oven and now I'm doing the intro in the beginning of the video. So it's a little backwards, but it works for me. So I have some rice and I'm going to be making some rice. So to make rice, you just read the instructions on the back. Normally, I just pour, but I have a measuring cup in here, so now I know how much I'm going to use. But, and you, when you put your, if you, if you don't have a measuring cup or anything like that, pour, put your rice in the pot, whether it's white rice or um, um, parboiled rice. Parboiled rice is easier for some people because it's, it's, it, like the white rice, it'll cake up on you and get sticky real, real fast if you don't watch it. So, I have some parboiled rice. So what I'm going to do is, anyway, like I was going to say, if you don't have any measuring cups, take your rice, put it down in the pot, and you want to wash your rice really, really good. Wash your rice. You want to wash it of the starch, of the dirt, or whatever that may be on the rice. Wash your rice real good. After you do that, you're going to pull the water off of it, and then you're going to add more water to it. When you add the water to it, you're going to you, when you put your rice in your pot, however much you put in there, you're going to measure all the way up to the, the middle of your finger to that line right there on your finger of how much water you want to be over your rice when you stick it down in there that's how much water you're gonna have over your rice okay so i'm about to get started i hope y'all enjoying my videos i am enjoying doing them and i hope you guys have been subscribing and commenting down below the ones that have subscribed to my channel i've been getting messages from people but i don't know if they were subscribers or not so um i ain't got that many people i just don't know why i don't know but i know i've been getting subscribers but i want to know who's subscribing to my channel and you know whether or not you like what you see and stuff like that you know, because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna do a lot of cooking videos because that's just what I love to do. So I'm just gonna go ahead on and get my rice so I can get this going. And I'm just gonna be cooking a cup and a half of rice. And when you use a cup and a half of rice, you're gonna put three cups of water, okay? And I'm going to show y'all something because I see a lot of people doing this and this is the way that, you know, with measuring. I put too much. Hold on. Okay. So that's a cup and a half. Okay. These measuring cups, these measuring cups and these measuring cups. This isn't for liquid. This is for your flowers, your dry goods, flour, gr um, grits, cornmeal, stuff like that. You don't use this for liquids. It's not the same. What you use for your liquids, cups they come in glass and they come in plastic use these measuring cups for your liquids um i wouldn't even use this measuring cup for dry because it's for liquid so use these measuring cups only for your liquids not for the dry use these measuring cups for the dry not for the liquids okay i hope i said that right because sometimes i be mixing up stuff and be going to say it wrong by the time i looked at the video and i hope i'm not too dark y'all hold on I feel like I'm looking a little dark. Okay, y'all. So I'm going to show y'all how I wash my rice. Let me get you some more light. Okay, so I have my bowl down in this thing. So I'm going to take my rice and I'm going to put it in that bowl. 
take that rice, put it in that bowl. My pot was wet, so it's sticking a little bit. Some people might say that you don't have to wash parboiled rice, but I do anyway. Okay, so take that rice and run some water on it. And you're just gonna run your hands through it and just wash that rice. Just wash it just like that. Just wash it. And you see how that starch and stuff is coming up off that rice? You see that? That's nasty. So you're just gonna take that and pour it off. We don't know if that's all starch. It can be some dirt mixed in it with it. So that's why it's good to wash your rice. And do it again. Do it till your water is pretty much clear as you can get it. Yes, you're washing starch off of it, but it's for the best. We don't need all that starch. I already eat unhealthy as it is, so any little steps I can take to save myself, I do it. So just pour that off. And it still was cloudy. Okay. Normally with about three washes, you're pretty good. And just wash that right. Looking a little bit better than what it is. I'm gonna do this all one more time and then I should be finished. Okay, yeah, see, it's looking better. It's not looking. It's not looking like it did the first time. You see that? It's not looking like it did. Okay? Hopefully y'all was able to see that on camera. I'm gonna just pour that off of them. And now I'm gonna get this rice back in my pot. But I'm gonna measure it with my hand so I can show, with my finger so I can show y'all what I'm talking about. Put my water in. Help me just got this bowl easy. Okay, so just get that on in there just like that. Okay, let me pull that off because now I can get the last little bit of rice out. All right, so get that right on in the in that pot. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my water and I'm gonna fill it up to my to that line on my finger. And I'm telling y'all, it makes the perfect rice every single time no matter how much rice unless you're making a big old big old big old pot but hold on i'm gonna show y'all i have this much water in the pot over that rice and when i cook this rice i'm gonna show y'all how this rice turn out you're gonna have the perfect rice every single time if you do it just like that all right so to this rice i am going to add some chicken base seasoning minced onion just sprinkle some in there so minced onion black pepper Parsley. Put some parsley in there. And 
you give it a good stir. And you just turn it on, bring it up to a boil. When it come up to a boil, turn it down on medium and let it finish cooking. But I'm gonna add some butter to this too. Now, I'm gonna add, I'm gonna add some butter now and I add butter later. Once I fluff it up. So I'm just stirring in those seasonings. So, just add some butter to this. Turn your eye up, let it get to boiling, and then turn it down to medium and let it finish cooking slowly. Get your lid on there and crack it so your pot don't boil over. All right, so I'll be back. Y'all, this is how I do my green onions when I get ready to put them in the freezer. I just cut them down and then I just chop, wash them off and chop them up and freeze them. I just wanted to show y'all what I do with my onions. Let's y'all. Just cut them up. Keep your onions from going bad. Just cut them up. Put them in the freezer. If you're not, if you're not the one that want to put them in some water to keep them growing. Don't let your stuff go bad. You spent your hard earned money on it. So why let it go bad? Just and they freeze good. I'm gonna show y'all, hold on. Let's see, I have these right here. And they crumble up just fine. I'm gonna show y'all what it look like. You see them? That's my green onions. That's what I do with them, just cut them up, put them in. show y'all that okay I'm back y'all and the rice is done I had to get off the eye but this how the rice turn out when you cook it like I told you and so when I get it like this don't think I'm gonna do this add some more butter I like some buttery rice, y'all. I'm sorry. I like butter rice. But. You see? And I just fluff it up with that rice and with that butter until it melts. But the rice turn out perfect every time if you do it just like that. See, the rice stands alone. It's not no uh, fluffy, sticky rice. I don't like rice like that. I like it when it's like this. It stands alone. Okay. So y'all, that's the rice. I'm about to get it out of this pot so I can wash my pot and get it into my little dish. Okay, y'all see that chicken? It looks so delicious. Look at that chicken, y'all. 
Okay, so now I'm about to add my little gravy to it. And so, and get it back in the oven for a little bit. Okay, so what I'm about to do is I'm gonna give it some flour. This is just a quarter cup of flour. I'm gonna put it in here. And I'm gonna take some of this chicken broth. I told y'all, if you don't add no water, it makes it on, make it on water. So I'm gonna take that chicken broth and I'm gonna pour it right in there and mix it up. Just stir that up. We still gonna need some more liquid because this is already thick after adding that hot water to it. So I'm gonna get some more, just a little bit more water and add it to this. And I'm gonna just pour this over and stick it right back in now. I'm gonna taste it to see if it's seasoned. Mm. Yeah, it's seasoned, y'all. I need no more seasoning. So I'm gonna just get this gravy and pour over this chicken and put it back in the oven. I had to taste a piece. Mm-hmm. Seasoned good. You see how it's already kind of thick? Pull that gravy right over it. Well, let me get a little bit more water. Okay, so I'm just pour this water right on in there. And it's gonna continue to thicken up. So I'm gonna put the foil back on it and I'm gonna let it sit for back in the oven for about 30 more minutes. But y'all see that? Y'all see that chicken? Look good, don't it? Okay. So get the foil back on up and put it back in the oven. And I'll be back when it's finished. beans just look at them and they don't get mushy or nothing by putting them in the oven you just warming them up see got my turkey in now two nice pieces of turkey mmm then it's gonna be so good y'all and that smells delicious so I'm not gonna put this back in the oven because it's heated all the way through. My stove is still on. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just take it and put it on that back eye back there and that'll keep it warm because to keep it right back here and it'll keep it warm because the steam come up, the heat come up through that back eye right there. So it'll keep this warm. And my rice is right here. And I just cracked the lid on it because by suffocating it, the steam gonna continue to fluff that rice up and I don't want it to be too fluffy, so I, I cracked the lid on it. All right, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead on and show you how I make my fried cornbread. To make my um fried cornbread balls, or whatever you wanna call them, I call them fried cornbread. I just call them plain fried cornbread, okay? So, get my pot on the stove and I'm gonna put some grease down in here. Kind of enough like you're trying to deep fry. That's how much grease you're going to put in there. So I'm going to put half this pot of grease. So I'm going to just get me some cornmeal. That's self rising cornmeal. And... I'm 
stir fries and flour. Okay. Two eggs. Don't crack me two eggs in here. Some sugar. If you don't like sugar in your cornbread, then you can skip this step. But we like sugar in our bread. That ain't a lot, y'all. <laughs> Some salt, just a little salt, pepper, okay, a little onion powder, okay. So, I have two eggs, cornmeal, self-rising flour, and the cornmeal is self-rising, sugar, salt, pepper, and a little onion powder. Not too much, but just a little bit. And so, I'm just going to give me some water, and I'm going to do a little at a time. Cold water. Okay. So that's some cold water. Hard to put a little bit in there. Push it down. And so you just want to stir this up. And you want it to be kind of thick. You don't want it to be loose for this kind of cornbread, cornbread that I'm making. But I want it just a little bit more floury than cornbread. You know, just a little bit more flour. Just watch, just watch the texture of it. So you got your cornmeal in now, and then you got your, your flour. So once you get it mixed up and it's still a little loose, then you just start adding more flour a little bit at a time to just get it to kind of like a pancake batter consistency. Okay? Because what we're going to need, what we're going to do with this is going to need to be like that. Still just a little bit too runny. Just a little bit. Y'all gonna see the reason for this in just a minute. So I'm going just a little bit thicker with it. Cause you don't want it to be too runny coming off your spoon for what we about to do. That's, okay, that's better. Yeah, that's better just like that. Now you see how they look when I, you see how I fall off all at one time instead of it roll off like it did? That's how you want it when you get ready. You don't want it just running off the spoon because it's not gonna work. You want it to plop off like in the ball. All right, y'all, so my grease is heating up and my mix is already mixed together. So to check my grease, I'm gonna just take a little bit of my bread and drop it in there. And if it come up and fry just like that, then you know it's ready. I hope y'all saw that. So I'm gonna turn my grease down on medium because it did come up and fry. Let me show you. Drop some down in there. See how it float back up? That's how you want it to do. 
So, this is what we're going to do. We're going to get us a spoon of it, like so, like this. And you're just going to take it, you're going to push it off in that grease just like that. And it's going to pop right back up for you. And they're going to fry in little balls. Y'all see how they fry? Don't do them too close together because you want to give them time to uh, pop back up to the top. Just push them off the spoon. Just like that. Just get your spoon. Push it off the spoon. And as they come up, you'll see how much room you got. Just fill in your spots. Don't do too many, too many at a time because they swell up. And so as they fry, what you're going to have to do is take them and you hit them and they'll flip over. Sometimes they be stubborn, stubborn, but just roll them over and let them brown. Just like that. We're just gonna get our little testers up out of there. So let them fry. And you'll know when they're ready. Just let them get golden brown. Buy them deep frying like this. They be done in the middle. Trust me. That's why you want more flour in this than cornmeal. Because this it's still cornbread, but the flour, it helps it to get to the consistency that you want it to be kind of like a pancake dough because you know that the um cornmeal is it's not like that it still stay kind of like running so yeah and don't have your heat up too high i have it two lines before medium so you know what number that what one two three four five maybe five or six if you have a stove like that put your stove on five or six and that might be um medium high that's what i have my stove on medium high it don't say medium high but to me that's what it is medium high and then the next step down is medium so put your stove on medium high and just let them brown but i'm steady rolling them over so they can get color And y'all, these little cornbread balls, that's why I call them cornbread balls. Because these little cornbread balls, y'all, they is so delicious. Like, so, 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 so good. You got to give them a try. I'm going to try to measure it up for y'all. And, um, and you see, like, some of the dough will start pushing out of it. But you still just let it fry. I'm so young. It just pushed on the powder that came off. So let it fry. Come on, y'all. Okay. So I want to say they probably will fry about five or six minutes so that you know they're fully done. I don't know how long they took, but this is real time, y'all. So y'all can time it and see how long it took. And 
and I did walk off for a second, so just take away two seconds, cause that's all it was, and I'm gonna, I'm gonna cut that little part out. But you see how they get nice and golden brown? And they frying slow. Don't let them fry too fast, cause the middle might not get done. About time for me to take that chicken out of the oven too, y'all. I'm rolling around to them 30 minutes. Okay. So these look pretty much done to me. So now what I'm about to do, I'm just take them on out. And as you can see, this is what they look like. Let the grease drain. And you're going to put them on your some paper towel so they can finish draining. And this is our smothered chicken and gravy, y'all. So if you want, um, you see the little grease that's in there? Only thing you have to go do is go through here and skim it off. Just take that little grease off. That's all you got to do. But I ain't finna do that right now because I gotta check this cornbread. Okay, you guys, here's the finished look of my smother baked chicken, rice, northern beans, and fried cornbread balls. Happy Sunday to all of you. I hope you guys try my recipe. I hope you guys like it. Please subscribe when you come to my channel if you like something that you see. Like this video. Comment down below and let me know what you liked about it. Or just let me know that you stopped by. But until next time, this is your girl, Tiana. I can only be me. Y'all have a blessed, blessed, blessed Sunday. And I hope you guys had a great, great dinner. Whatever it is that you have. And until next time, peace.